Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today I'm going to show you what you can do if your HDMI ports on your TV have blown. Now before you rush out and buy a new TV, there's still a way you can connect up your HDMI equipment for not a lot of money and the quality will still be 1080p, so it will still be full HD. Now the picture may not be quite as good as using a HDMI cable, but most people won't notice. Now the story with this TV is quite a few years old now but it is a 1080p TV so it's a full HD TV but unfortunately the HDMI ports blew quite a while ago. Now I managed to fix this again by heating them up heating up the HDMI chip and it did work for a few months but then they blew. So really it kind of renders the TV useless because if you want to connect up your Xbox you're forced, or your PlayStation 4 or whatever, you're forced to use a HDMI cable. Now at the moment on this video here I'm going to be connecting up an Xbox One and also a Roku media player. Now at the moment on this little media player I'm using a composite lead so that's the red, white and yellow connections. That's quite uh, quite an old-fashioned connection, probably the sort of things you used to connect up with your maybe a video, your VHS years ago. But the problem is if you have a look at the picture, it's really bad quality. So it's not a HD picture and you can see it's quite blurry. And when you're watching things like YouTube and Netflix, the quality is bad, especially if you're paying for one of the better Netflix package that gives you, you know, your, your full HD. So uh, an easy way to fix this, and it's only going to cost you between 10 and 15 pounds, is to get the parts that I'm going to show you in this video. So chances are your TV is going to be quite a few years old if the HDMI ports have blown because normally it takes a while for that to happen. And most of the slightly older TVs do have this VGA input here. So if you have a look here, you can see this one here, it says RGB in PC. That's basically a VGA input. Now I was always under the impression that VGA was only 720p, but it's not. It can actually work up to 1080p. It's this one here. So if you find that your HDMI ports no longer work, but you do have one of these, these connectors here, that's a VGA in, then you will still be able to get your equipment connected up. So what you have to do is, you have to get yourself one of these adapters. Now this is a HDMI to a VGA adapter. So if you have a look there, you've got a, a male plug there and a VGA female here. Now this was only 4 99 from eBay, so just under five UK pounds. And it even comes with the little lead as well for your, your sound, your audio. Remember, with HDMI it carries the picture and the sound, but with VGA it only carries the picture. But by using a separate audio lead, then you will get the sound as well. Now, HDMI is a digital picture and VGA is an analog picture, but you can still get the 1080p, but it will be a tiny little bit blurry if you were to look really close. But you have to look closely and most people wouldn't even notice. Now, if you just, if you just have the one piece of equipment connected up to the TV, then that's absolutely fine. That's all you need. But you will also need to get yourself a male to male little VGA coupler and the reason being is if you get this one here it's a male here but it's a female here yet on the TV the VGA is a female so you're going to have to use a male to male coupler again you can get these for a couple of pounds and you plug it in there and that will then turn this into a male so we've got a male HDMI to a male VGA and that's all you need to do and then you just need to plug the audio lead into your TV. So if you just had, for example, if you just wanted to connect the Xbox One and nothing else, this is all you would need to do. You would just need to plug it in there like so, and then if you have a look here, it says audio in. So that's my audio in, which will go like so. Now, if, for example, you had your TV, if it didn't have a 3.5, because this little plug here is a 3.5 millimeter male jack. So that's fine because it can plug straight in. But some TVs have a, a phono connector, that's an RCA connector, similar to these ones here. And they will often be labeled up as red and white. If that's the case, you will just need to get yourself one of these leads here. This is a short lead, this is a 50 centimeter, 3.5 millimeter jack to two RCA phonos and you would just plug that into your VGA adapter there and then you would plug this into your red and white audio RCA in and that will provide the audio 
into the TV. But in this instance here, my TV does just use the 3.5, so it makes it a little bit easier and a little bit cheaper because you actually get this lead, this audio lead, with the five pound adapter. Now, all you would have to do is you would have to connect this lead here into your Xbox. But the problem is, I mean, it's gonna be a bit short, so what you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to extend this out using a little HDMI coupler and then your HDMI lead. But what I'm gonna do here is because I wanna connect up my Roku media player and my Xbox One, and I've only got the one VGA input, I'm gonna attach it via a little HDMI switch. Again, this is all cheap stuff from Amazon and eBay. It only goes up to 1080p, but that's fine, that's all I need. If you had a 4K TV, then you're gonna have to get a different switch, but you're not gonna be able to get anything above 1080p on these adapters anyway, because VGA will only go up to 1080p. So what I need to do is, this one here is gonna be my output, so I'm gonna connect my output into here, like so, and what a HDMI switch does is, it allows you to connect up to five inputs, because this is a, a five input switch. If, if you only wanna spend three pounds, you can get a three input switch, because it's even cheaper. But I just had this one lying around from downstairs, I'm just showing you for the purpose of the video, that's why I've got this sticker on it. But now I can connect my Roku Media Player and my Xbox into one of the inputs, and then what I can do is, instead of having to manually hit this switch all the time, it also comes with a little IR emitter here that you can stick to the bottom of your TV. It's got a nice little 3M little pad here. You can stick that to the bottom of your TV and then you can hide this all behind your TV and then you can sit back and you can use a little remote control. Now, the very cheap switches, if you get them for maybe like £3.50, you'll probably find that it hasn't got the remote control and the little IR emitter, but I got this one for, I think it was under five pounds, but you can get them for, you know, just over four pounds, so we're not talking a lot of money at all. So let's, let's connect up the equipment and I'll just show you. So at the moment I have got the Roku media player via a composite lead, and just to show you again, you can see it's quite blurry. So what we're gonna do is, we're gonna unplug the composite lead, that's that one there, and we're gonna plug in the HDMI lead again. So plug it in there like so. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna plug the other end of the HDMI lead into one of the inputs. So I'm just gonna plug it into there. And then on my Xbox One, I'm gonna plug the HDMI lead into another one of the inputs. It doesn't matter which ones you use. And now, if I go to my TV, and if I go to input, and I'm now gonna put it to RGB. Now you can still see that my HDMI's are blanked out, they no longer work. But if I go to my input and put it to RGB, you will now see that I've got my Roku Media Player back through here. But it's still blurry because the settings are still on the composite settings. So I'm just gonna go down to settings and put it to 1080p. So let's go to display type, go over here. Now I'm gonna go down to 1080p HDTV and hopefully it should work. Now, yes or no, does the screen look good? So I'm gonna put yes, and there we go. If I go to home now, you can see now how much clearer it looks. So now when I watch YouTube or Netflix, it's now gonna be on full HD, even using the VGA connector. So that's that one there. Now let's say now if I wanna go over to my Xbox. So what I need to do is I need to go to my remote control and I've got it plugged into, which one have I got my Xbox plugged into? I've got that plugged into input two. So I'm gonna hit two on my remote control. There we go. And it's just time to update. Unfortunately, I haven't started this in a while. So let's just start the update. Right, I'm just gonna come back to that when the update's done. Right, so it's done. finally done us all this updating, and as you can have a look, the picture's nice and clear. I'm just gonna go to settings just to show you that it is 1080p. So go to settings, I'm gonna go to display and sound, video outputs, and if you have a look there, TV resolution 1080p, 1080p there. And if you have a look at the actual graphics on Forza Horizons, you can see there that you can tell that that's a good picture. And although people do say on VGA that when you look closely, it can be a little bit blurry, so it's not gonna be as good as the HDMI cable, because remember, it's now gone to, from digital to analog, but 
most people wouldn't even notice the difference. If they were side by side, you may notice the difference, but playing this up in a bedroom like this one here, you're not really gonna have any problem with that picture at all. So it's definitely not worth throwing away your old TV. And just have one more look at the back there so you know what's going on. As you can see, there's nothing connected to any of the three HDMI ports. It's all going via the VGA one here. So the idea is, is to tuck this up, tie it all up here, and you can just have your little IR thing stuck to the bottom, and then what you can do is just control it all from your controls. So for example now, if I just want to watch normal TV, I would just go to antenna like normally, and then if I go to input, RGB, and then it will be this one, and if for example I wanted to swap over to the Roku on just the IR controller here, the little remote, I go to there, and then I can use my Roku remote control. So I thought that would come in useful because a lot of people think that when their HDMI ports go that they've got to throw away their TVs because the only thing they can get is the free to view channels. But by spending between like 8 and £15, pounds, so some people, you know, you might have to buy one of these so it's going to cost a little bit extra. But in my instance I needed a HDMI switch for under a £5. Pound. I needed the VGA, the HDMI to VGA adapter, again £5. Pound. And that little coupler, those little couplers, the VGA male to male couplers, again a couple of pounds. So it's not a lot of money to spend and then at least your TV can live on a little bit longer. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you're watching this around Christmas time now and it's just come out, thanks to all my subscribers. Wish you all a, a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and look forward to doing more videos in the new year. Take care. Bye now.